Hi, this is Phil McCauley from Labour Business TV. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Eleni Chalmers. Eleni is a brand strategist and a member of Labour Business and a participant in the Executive Committee. Hi, Eleni, how are you today? I'm very well, Phil, how are you doing? I'm great, thanks. I mean, the first question I really want to ask you is, you know, tell me a little bit about your take on the Labour Party as a brand, the Labour brand. Where have we been in the last five years? Where are we going now? How should we think about that from a brand strategy perspective? Well, it's a really, really great question. It's really about deciding whether you're a brand that wants to win or whether you're a brand that wants to like, you know, stay popular with its supporters. And I think um, one of the things that we've learned over the last few quite tough years is how important it is to recognize that you are a challenger brand. That's the word that we tend to use in the marketing industry. You know, the, the conservatives will always have more money to spend on marketing. Um, they are far more likely to win elections than we are. So in order for us to break through that convention, if you like, we need to be that much smarter, that much more effective and that much more creative in the way we communicate to the general public, not just to our members. So that's interesting. So if you were to characterize, say, let's pick the Corbyn era from a brand point of view, what were the brand values and, and what were the things that need to change now that we have Keir Starmer at the helm? Well, it's always good with hindsight to know the things that uh, you'd want to change. I think the, what we learned in the, if you like, the Corbyn era was the power of authenticity and how much it can really engage and recruit lots of new people to your brand. And bringing new people to your brand is incredibly important if you want to win. And if you don't bring new people in, you won't win. Um, the issue was whether they were only really, once you joined the fold, whether actually we were only ever talking to ourselves. And when you look at the way the, the brand communicated itself to the general electorate, everybody argued very authentic, very earnest. We know what the values are on some topics, not all. Um, but it didn't necessarily resonate with people that weren't already um, sold into the Labour brand. Uh, as, as they say in the States, people, one with people who had if you like, drunk the Kool-Aid, rather than people who were really not sure, should it be a Lib Dem vote? Should it be a Conservative vote? Should it be a Green vote? Should it be a Scottish Nationalist vote? Those were the people that we needed to be targeting our messaging to, and we didn't really get there. So when we think about messaging then, and we, we think about Keir Starmer taking over, I mean, so far it's been very impressive. Forensic is the word I keep hearing about his dispatch box performances, but of course, that audience is not very widely seen by the electorate because it's a, the Westminster bubble and the political coterie and journalists watching that. What do we need to do? What does he need to do to get brand care and brand labor out to the wider electorate? Well, it's very encouraging so far. Um, people use the word forensic about care a lot and it's very definitely a forensic style. It's a lot more engaging emotionally than you would expect for, from a word that comes out of the world of science. Um, one of the things that was very clear, even during the leadership battle, was that he is very aware that the job of an opposition is to become the government. And, you know, I, I tend to think of him, and I've seen that recently at PMQs, that he really is killer care. You know, what seemed like quite a perhaps a bit of an aloof, competent, intelligent um, persona is actually quite ruthless. And that's really encouraging because what that says is that he's out to win and we absolutely need to have a leader that's out to win because that means he's going to listen to people that actually aren't naturally Labour supporters and that's terribly important. It's most interesting. Well, thanks for that. So if we think about the red wall and the, the big failure at the last election to carry our homelands and all of that, what do we have to do to recreate our brand values with those voters who deserted the Labour Party at the last election? 
Gosh, that's a massive question, uh, isn't it, Phil? I mean, it's, it's the question that we have to answer. Um, I guess the first thing that I would look at is messaging and the difference between messaging and values. So for example, we went into the 2017 election with for the many, not the few. Um, we lost that election and then we went into the same election, in into another election in 2019, and we lost again. So, so the first thing is we have to learn from our mistakes. And the first thing that I would say about for the many, not the few, is that anybody who is a Labour supporter totally understands how important that is as a value to the Labour movement. Nobody would question it. Is that, however, a campaign strategy? Is that a memorable, resonant slogan that is going to bring a potential Tory voter or a Lib Dem voter or a Green voter or a Scottish nationalist voter to the table? And it, it, it plainly isn't because what every human being needs is hope for themselves as well as hope for the country. And what it didn't do is it didn't balance the fact that all of us need, are constantly in a world where we are struggling and trying to meet our individual needs and our dreams and at the same time be part of a society that we are proud of. And what that slogan did was first of all, it wasn't a memorable slogan, but second of all, it just played to the collective. It didn't play to individual hopes and dreams. And unless you can engage with people on that level, you're never going to get enough people voting for you that wouldn't ordinarily do that. You, in the end, what you want is you want people to say, I wouldn't normally vote Labour, but I'm gonna vote Labour this time. And those are the people you should be targeting your message to. Interesting, I mean, Labour has been, preoccupied with the class system for the last hundred years and, and rightly so at the beginning because it used to be very clear but people are aspirational now and we've seen this in the United States with the focus upon politicians talking to the middle class because everybody is aspirational and don't like to be labeled what do you think labor has to do to break free of that behavior and start to address the broadest possible population? Well, it's always, a, it's going to be a combination of understanding all the different types of people we need to be talking to, all the different types of groups, the different classes, the different ethnic groups, the different demographic groups, the different regions, all of those have to be understood, but you need, and you need to be able to talk to them in a way that resonates with them at their relevant level. However, you still need to be able to have, create a world, an idea, um, language that, that everybody can rally behind because we want leaders, our leaders, to be leaders and to create a world that we want to step into. I'm quite encouraged by Keir, Keir's leadership line of another future is possible because it had hope. You know, it had the idea that things could get better. It, it, it's not a slogan. It's a little bit too tentative. It doesn't, I hate to use the three word, two, three word rule, but there's a reason why, yes, you can work for Obama, why just do it works for Nike, why sadly get Brexit done, worked for the Tories, even though it clearly isn't done. So, um, it, 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 you know, you need to be able to turn that into something that people feel good about. And what is quite interesting about Another Future is Possible is that you're beginning to get into the world of saying, actually, things could get better. And, and, and how can you not want that? That makes a lot of sense. Now, let's talk about values for a minute. Do you think the Labour values are clear enough to the people who don't vote Labour? Um, probably not. I think if they were, obviously I'm biased, I think if they were, people would have voted for us. Um, it, you know, a lot of the policies that we have are policies that are very difficult to argue against. And they are policies that actually people do want. The only problem is that it's not something that is expressed clearly and simply to people who do, who do not really want to read Guardian all the time or uh, want to sort of follow PMQs or all the various sort of uh, 
information sources that us sort of political nerds tend to enjoy. Um, it, it, it is the best ideas are always simple, and if that you know, and they need to be able to express in a way that feels like something. You, you would inevitably want. So I don't think people do understand labor values. I don't think they understand that actually there is a society, this, we want a society with safety nets where individuals can actually realize what their dreams and ambitions are. And that is part of labor values, but it's not something that the, pe the people on the street would necessarily be able to play back to you in a way that we would like. Fascinating. So as we think then about our brand strategy, between now and the 2024 election. What kind of milestones and what kind of messaging and what kind of system does the party need to put in place? For example, in terms of message discipline and in addition to that, communication of these values to those segments? It's, it's a great question and it's, it's what communication strategists spend their entire lives figuring out. Um, it really is about that they need to do a lot of social listening. You know, they need to get into all the different Facebook groups. They need to look at what people are doing. I'm sure they probably are doing this, but they need to then take it to the next stage, which is to say, these are people's concerns. How can we answer them in a way that is true to what we stand for? And actually, I think we should be much more confident about what we stand for. Different parties have different barriers. So for example, the Conservative Party, you know, they, everybody knows they can win and they continue to win. Uh, what people don't necessarily know or believe is that the party is authentic or that it cares. So they have to, their strategy has to be quite different to us. Our strategy is people know we are authentic. They generally know the Labour Party is a caring institution. What they don't see us as is necessarily being winners. People that can lead, people that can take the party to a better place, to take the country to a better place than it is now. And, and that is about, you know, drive, ambition, and leadership, and being prepared to say and talk about unpopular things with confidence, because we don't want to be the party that is also running shy of interrogation, that is also sort of running away from exposure or accountability. You know, we have nothing to hide, and any of the issues that we've had before, we are addressing under Keir's leadership. So we need to be absolutely ruthless in our determination to make people aware of that because that means courage and confidence and confidence breeds confidence in others and I think Keir's got to a brilliant start on that front. Very interesting and finally thinking about the next six months, 12 months while Keir Starmer establishes his personal mark on the leadership of the party and the country get to know him, what does he need to be thinking about in terms of how he develops his persona in the public eye? Gosh, that's a really good question. Um, I think that he's, he's actually very, very likable and very human. And, you know, you're seeing a lot of it coming out now that we're getting a lot more exposure to the Labour leader than we may have done in the past. The media like him, he seems to respond well to those sort of media interviews. I think showing that human side you know, married to this ruthless um, killer care persona PMQs feels like a pretty good combination. And then leveraging all the talents that he has in his cabinet to show that this is actually an army and our army looks much stronger than the other side at the moment. Excellent. So what would your message be to the Labour Party under the new General Secretary when appointed about the structure and our digital approach to communication. I was, I was listening to your interview with Nick Smallman and I thought that some of the things he said were, were absolutely fascinating. I think the first thing I would say is get your campaign for 2024 started now. Start thinking about what you should be saying. What are the real sort of hot topics to focus on? How can we unlock the vote amongst non-Labour voters? Get, that, uh, get those ideas developed and then get the machine behind it up and running so that everybody within the organization, within the, and all the MPs are starting to embrace it and starting to talk about it so that by the time we get to 2024, 
if not sooner. Um, we'll be at, you know, at our machine will be completely organized, focused and committed. That makes a lot of sense. Well, thanks for joining me today. Thanks very Good much. Good luck creating a great brand strategy. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.